Welcome to day 21 of our January challenge 2020. And we um, have some bars today that hark back to day three and four. And it's a long time ago now um, of working on this piece. Um, so I'm just gonna go straight into it. Remember yesterday we knew that we were aiming for a C. Well, we're landing at that C today. So I'll go straight in for you on our four bars for today. Here we go. Okay, so if I'm going to just demo for you the couple of bars from yesterday leading into that so that you can hear the lead into that C. So this is just finishing yesterday. these two bars, um, the two bars at the end here, um, needs a bit of attention and it might be that you draw some lines to show that's got to land with that or a pair of specs to show that that's got to wait. So we've got this tied G for example, in this right hand we have E, G, up to an E at the top. Um, and you can place that 4, 3, 1, which is how I've just been doing it, but we need to watch E, G, that we don't play the E at the top straight away. There's a whole extra crotchet before that needs to land. So you may choose to play the E and the G with two and one, so that you have to move to that E, but you might find that prevents you from playing it too soon. So choose which fingering works, write it in, um, so that you can do it consistently. That would be really good. Okay. So going back to the beginning of today, we start with a C in the right hand and underneath that C, we have a C octave in the left with the middle finger falling out to the G and they start together and this ripple gets continued in the top hand with D, E, G and this did happen back in day three. And then we, before we play the G, we're going to reach down with third finger to the B so that we can make that da -de -da -dum. we can make that all add together. So let's just try the right hand and the left hand, just getting us to that B at the beginning of the next bar in the top hand. OK, so starting at the beginning of today, bar 70, I'll count you in. So as soon as you've played that C, and you can practice this move now, we're going to leap to D, E, G. It's the two clear strings and then another clear string at the other side of the black. Okay, so back to the red C. Here's our count in. One and two and three and... Okay, can we do that one more time? C at the top, C, G, C in the left. One and two and three and. Okay, now as we land on that B with finger three in the top hand, we need a different thing happening in the left. We're just on nice octaves here. Move to the E octave, just a little higher, one below the black and allow the finger two to fall out, which will be now one below the red. So that lands with the B in the top hand. And then that's answered by E and G in the right hand, either side of the black. Okay, so if I play those two bars for you and then I'll do it again and you can join in, but just so you hear it. wants to be just a continuation of that ripple okay so you try that with me now so right hand on C 
Left hand open up the octave and allow finger two to just fall into that middle note. Notice there's no clawing, there's nothing curvy going on here. Okay, here's our count in. One and two and three and. C at the top, C, G, C in the bass. Ready? One and two and three and. Okay, one last time. C in the top, C, G, C in the left. Here's our count. One and two and three and okay the next two bars in the left hand are a repetition of what you've just done but an octave higher so you did a c so we're now on middle c with our thumb again allow finger two to just fall onto the g and we do up to the E, so one below the blacks with finger two falling onto the B, one below the red. Okay, so it's just a repetition of what happened here, but up an octave. So if you get that left hand placed ready on the C's. Top hand, again, like I said earlier, you can either choose to do two and one on the E and G, or four and three with your thumb ready up on the high E. Okay, that's more secure, so long as you don't play the high E too soon. Okay, so I'm going to talk you through. We play the left hand C, the left hand G, then the middle C and the fourth finger or the E note in the top hand land together. Bit of time, the right hand plays the G. Left hand's got ready in the meantime. Now the left hand on its own plays the bass E, bass B. And then these last two notes, which is an E in both hands, land together. Okay, that's how that works. So if you get your top hand on again, left hand on the reds, and I'm going to do it in time this time. I'll count you in if you want to join in. One and two and three and... So hands ready, you can join in. One and two and three and. And, and left and then together. Okay, let's go again. I'll try not to talk over it this time. Left hands on reds. One and two and three and. So let's add that on the end of what we've done already today. So we start with our finger two on the red C, left hand down right on the bass reds with finger two falling out onto that G. Okay, and here's our count in. Remember top hand's gonna move down to D, E, G. It's gonna ripple there. Here's our count in. One and two and three and. C in the top, C, G, C in the bass, and here's our count, one and two and three and. Lovely, well done, one final time. C's everywhere. One and two and three and. Well done, and we 
just getting quieter on those last few notes. The trick with this is to always, and this is the trick with harp playing generally, always use any gap you've got in a hand to get it placed on what's coming up next or to move it near to what's coming up next if you're wanting it to ring out. Um, and uh, same with both hands, that is the key really to playing anything on the harp. Okay, well done. One more day tomorrow, which is just to finish our piece off. Really impressed, well done.